Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the basics of NeoVim. So we're going to be learning um, basic movements around the screen. We're going to be learning how to open and edit files, save files. We're going to be learning um, a little advanced ways to move around a document, uh, how to skip through lines, um, how to use text objects. We're going to be learning some operators, so delete, change, yank, uh, etc. Uh, it's going to be a lot of information, but uh, I'm confident you guys will be able to get through it. So uh, no bullshitting around, let's jump right into it. Oh, right. The first thing we're going to talk about is obviously opening a file, saving a file, closing a file, and exiting the editor. Um, you might say, wow, that sounds really boring. Well, it is. But um, a lot of people have trouble with it when they first start Vim, and rightfully so. Uh, nothing's really average in Vim the way we do things. Um, anyways, let's get into it. Um, you see, I have my edit my, sorry, my terminal open here. Uh, I'm already navigated to a directory that has some code in it. Um, let me show you the directory here. Um, sorry. Go into it. So this is my directory here. Why is that so ugly? There we go. So this is the directory tree here. Um, let's just open something simple. Let's open the package.json. So what we'll do is say invim dot slash. And you start typing package and hit tab to auto complete. So if you're using PowerShell, and match enter. And there we go. We have our file open. Now, uh, say we want to make some changes to this file and save it. The way we're going to save it is by using a shift colon and typing the W keyword. Or you can write the entire command if you really would like to. You can type out the word write. Uh, to exit the editor, as you can probably now imagine, we would do something similar and type quit or type the shorthand Q. We can mash up on our arrow key to go back up to the last used command and mash, mash enter, and we'll be back inside of this file. And that pretty much concludes opening a file, saving a file, and exiting them. Uh, I'd like to show you one more thing before we finish with this section, though. Uh, as you can see here, we have a source directory. So let's open that up in nvim. So we'll just say nvim src hit tab and now you see we have like a kind of a file tree open here where you can kind of navigate your directory and see which file you'd like to open just by navigating with the arrow keys and mashing the enter key on whichever you'd like to expand and finally choosing a file in the end all right that concludes this section for how to open save close file and open directories in Vim. Alright guys, now we're going to learn how to navigate a document. Okay, so we have our code open here. Now the most basic navigation of a thing you can make is just basically moving up, down, left, and right. In Vim there are two ways of doing this, generally. Um, the first method is what you would expect. Use the up, down, left, and right arrow keys to move the cursor respectively. Um, doesn't get much simpler than that. Um, the other way, and the better way in my opinion, is to use the H, J, K, K and L keys. Uh, this keeps your fingers planted on the home row. You always know where to reset your fingers to. And it's just generally faster in my opinion. The arrow keys feel clunky to me. It's hard to reach my finger down and hit them because I just can't get a feel for where they are very good. But for the H, J, K and L keys, the... It's odd because it's a flat set of keys that moves you in two dimensions. So the way I did it was I kind of tried to break down the two dimensions with two sets of fingers. So I use my index and pinky finger to move left and right. Okay. 
and then I'll actually, when I want to move up and down, and this is kind of odd, but I'll shift my fingers over one row, and I'll use my index finger for J to go down, and my middle finger for K to go up. Um, that's just what I do. Um, probably if you're a really good home row typer, you'll just reach your index finger over to the H off of the J to move left. But uh, me, I, sh I shift my fingers when I do it. Um, but the, 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 the H, J, K, and L keys, there's really nothing that I can tell you to help you learn them and get good at them and, and get efficient. It's just it takes a lot of practice and muscle memory. Uh, it, probably after about a couple of days working with them, you should be pretty efficient with the H, J, K, and L keys. Um, don't worry about it too much in the beginning though, don't stress yourself about getting super crazy efficient with it because you'll quickly learn that the H, J, K, and L keys are probably the least efficient way to move around in Vim. So uh, we're not going to hang up on that, just practice, 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 maybe pause the video if you'd like, practice it for a couple minutes, try to get a little less clunky with the H, J, K, L movements if you decide to go with that. Um, some people may put you down for trying to use the arrow keys. Uh, I say do whatever you like, do whatever is more efficient for you, whatever is more comfortable for you. So uh, let's move on to a little bit more advanced navigation. Okay, so starting here with our cursor in the top left of the screen, let's say um, we, 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 we want to change the import location here from React to something else. Okay, so normally we would have to just hold the L key until we jump over there and, you know, then we can... You know, use the X to delete character, delete, delete, delete. But um, that's that's not the way we want to navigate in Vim, okay? So what we want to do is, starting back from the very beginning, we want to use the W text object for word. So this will jump us forward by one word at a time. Word, 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 word. Whoa, you might be saying, that was kind of weird. Well, that's because we're using a lowercase W. Um, generally in code, you're going to want to use the capital W text object. I'm not sure what the official term for that difference is, but um, when you use the capital W, it's going to actually define a word by spaces and not also including special characters. Because when we use the lowercase w, you see we jump to this um, quote here, and then it jumps to the word, and then to the next quote. Now, if we go back to the beginning and try it with the capital W, you'll see we jump from one word to the next word, to the next word, to the next line. So when we use the capital W, it delimits words by spaces. So we'll see that again in action here. I'll use the capital W, and you see this space here, we're going to jump that space. So this, including the comma, will be a word. So now we're in the next word, and then the next word is a space delimited character and a word and a word again so I would recommend try jumping around using words after we get done with this it's extremely helpful in getting to where you need to go on the line but similar to the word text object we have the end of a word text object so we'll do E that takes you to the end of the word to the end of the next word the end of the next word the end of the next word and so on and so forth and it has the same effect when we use the capital E, to the end of the next word, end of the next word, end of the next word. You see this time, unlike the capital W key, it didn't jump us to the next line, to the beginning of the next word on the next line, I should say. Now, likewise, we also have the B text object. So this will jump us a backwards a word. I'll use the capital B, jump back to that apostrophe, quote, I'm sorry, and back and back and back again. And you'll see it even works inside of this code here. I'll use the capital B, jumps to this character, capital B again to the index word, capital B again, space delimited characters, capital B again to the space separated word node, capital B again, takes us all the way back to the beginning because this entire set here has no spaces in it. Even though it looks like it should be separate words, it's not because there are no spaces. So this is very useful for navigating code. Alright guys, so we know how to jump around a little bit, now let's learn how to actually change some text, okay? So uh, the first thing to mention, I think, is that we're not in a position to change text right now, because 
when you load Vim up, you're actually inside of normal mode, Vim calls it. Um, this is the mode for us to enter commands and motions and operators for us to jump around and edit massive amounts of text at once. Uh, actually, if we want to enter text, we would need to hit the I key for insert mode. Okay, let me show you an example. So I'll hit I, and you'll see my cursor changes from a block cursor to a bar cursor. And now I'm free to enter text just how, how you would in any other editor like VS Code, Sublime Text, or whatever you may be used to. Uh, there are multiple ways to enter insert mode. Um, I kind of brings your block cursor back a level, which is kind of odd to me sometimes. So I, I, I usually like to use A to enter insert mode, which is actually append. And it kind of takes the block cursor forward one, which is more intuitive to me. So um, you know, hit A dash, and then you can type whatever here. Versus um, if we were to hit insert, it brings you behind the character that you're at. I don't really like using the I key. I, use, I normally use the A key to enter insert mode. But uh, even still, insert mode isn't really that powerful. We, for the most part, we'll stay in um, normal mode throughout using Vim. It's just more powerful and the breadth of what you can do is much larger in normal mode. So uh, let's see an example of that, okay? So when we use the W key, we're actually using a motion. We're using a word motion. We're going one word forward. We're going one word backwards with the B key. We're going to the end of a word with the E key. So this is a motion. This is where we're moving the cursor to. But Vim also has this thing called text objects. And uh, we can specify a text object using either the I key for enter or the A key for A. So let's, let's, let's try that out. So we're going to combine an operator with a motion here, and we're going to see how this works versus how a text object works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the operator C for change and then W for word. So we'll do CW, change word. And you'll see that the word under the cursor disappears and you're in insert mode for you to type a new value. Once you're done typing, you can hit escape and go back to normal mode. You'll see your block cursor reappears. Now let's see something kind of funky. Say we're right here in the word and we do CW for change word. You'll see that the whole word doesn't disappear because this motion is only continuing from where the cursor is to the end of that word, which is to the next special character or space. That's really not the functionality we want when trying to change text objects in Vim. Um, the more efficient way to do this would be to use the command C for change I for enter and W for word. This operates on the text object as a whole. You'll see that even though my cursor was in the center of the word, the entire word itself disappeared. And now we're in insert mode and can type the new value and get back to command mode. This is much more efficient than positioning your cursor at the beginning of a word and attempting to change it in this fashion. Wow, that's pretty cool you might be saying. And you're absolutely right. It's awesome. But this is not the best thing yet still okay so even here in this little quote block here um, we can do change enter capital W for word and that is going to erase the entire thing why because the word has no the, the quotes don't have spaces around the word so the quotes are counted as the entire word that's not the functionality we want here. That's kind of annoying. We have to retype those quotes now and then retype, you know, the import. That's dumb. We don't want to do that. So what do we do instead? Well, there's also a text object for quotes. So as you probably imagine, we can just place the cursor anywhere inside of these quotes and say C I and type the quote symbol. Now you'll see that the quotes are emptied and we're free to type a new value inside of them. Wow, great. We can do the same thing here. Change enter quotes. Wow. So you're probably seeing a little bit of a trend here. So here we have some brackets. I wonder if they work. Change enter brackets. Yep, they sure do. That's amazing. This is one of my favorite things about Vim, and one of the things that, in my opinion, makes Vim such a powerhouse. 
Um, it's no more grabbing the mouse, highlighting a certain area of text. As long as you know your text objects, you can always manipulate exactly what you need to manipulate at one time. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, we also have tag objects for HTML. Um, you see here we have a um, content card styles h1 react component here but it's inside of an HTML tag and Vim knows what an HTML tag is. So anywhere on top of this HTML tag I can do C I can do the command I'm sorry I can do the command CIT change enter tag. Now everything inside of that tag is gone now and I'm free to edit it to my heart's content. We'll do it one more time. Change enter tag and wow here's a new title. That's amazing. That's so quick. So I can do that. I can do the same thing here, even with all of this content in the middle. CIT, change enter tag. Now I have new content inside of there. No grabbing the mouse, selecting, deleting, none of that. Even here, inside of the parentheses, change enter parentheses. Now I have new arguments inside of here that quickly. Right here, put it on the bracket, change enter brackets. Now I can rewrite this function instantaneously. This is the real editing power of M, you guys. Once you combine operators with text objects and motions, it's like you're a composer in a symphony and you're composing your own little text powerhouse commands. It's, it's really insane. Um, but I do believe that that is enough content for this basics video. Uh, I know I just introduced a lot right there at the very end. Maybe rewind the video, rewatch the little section about text objects. Um, you really want to get a feel for them before you want to move on to doing more advanced things in Vim. The text objects and motions and operators are really going to be your bread and butter. That's really all you need in Vim. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at installing some plugins, getting some syntax highlighting set up for you guys. Um, you know, your Vim will not look like mine if you haven't done anything inside of your configuration. But we'll cover that on the next video. Right now, I just want everyone to practice and uh, get a good feel for using text objects and motions and operators. Alright, thanks for watching you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like if you did. Uh, subscribe if you want to see future videos. Everyone have a good one. Stay safe out there.